entire ecosystems are collapsing. We will drill, baby, drill. It's why the world is looking to you. Beginning of a mass extinction. This declaration is an acknowledgement of the next generation. I am a victim of this whole climate crisis and I am not ashamed to say so. Think of a warming climate like a line of dominoes. For every one degree of increased temperature, a domino will fall, with each having impacts on both people and society in a runoff effect. In reality, the implication of a warming climate is far more complex. Nearly all land areas are seeing increased hot days, and heat waves, storm severity and frequency are becoming more extreme. Drought incidents, species extinction, and impacted food supply are just some of the implications that a warming world will have. We often talk within climate discourse about resilience and adaptation as well as mitigation. Mitigation is the reduction in carbon, right? so reduction in global emissions and hopefully eventually taking down carbon to effectively zero. Um, and then resilience and adaptation is about dealing with what we have made, right? The current kind of global strategy, as much as we have one, is based on the realization we probably won't reach our climate targets, to be honest. In a post-COVID-19 world, health systems are still recovering and are increasingly volatile to emerging disease threats. And we see that these kinds of health inequalities like dengue are perpetuated and worsened by atmospheric environmental factors. One such disease that is expected to increase is dengue fever, a disease primarily driven by two mosquito species, Aedes aegypti and Aedes allopictus. Symptoms can range from mild flu-like symptoms to severe dengue that can result in hospitalisation and death. Four serotypes of dengue regularly circulate in tropical and subtropical regions of the world. Severe dengue risk rises with multiple serotype infections. So one of the major risk factors is obviously um, the availability of, of water and water sources, although you don't need to necessarily have very consistent rainfall patterns because of this capacity for eggs to dry out. Um, but if you have increased rainfall, you will have more, or more abundant vectors and increasing temperatures mean the mosquitoes themselves will breed more quickly, you'll have a greater population density of mosquitoes, but also increasing temperatures tends to reduce the amount of time that mosquitoes need to incubate the virus, the dengue virus, in order to become um, uh, competent for transmission. The life cycle of Aedes mosquitoes is very temperature dependent, and um, particularly at the early stages where the life cycle of the Aedes mosquito um, occurs where adult females lay eggs in the water and um, larvae hatch out and spend typically around a week to 10 days processing through different uh, stages in the water before then emerging as adults. Higher temperatures particularly, this pro that process in the water happens far, far quicker. And um, when that happens quicker, the mosquitoes tend to be fitter. And um, so they just tend to be larger, they tend to be healthier and those factors all contribute to them tending to be better at spreading dengue virus. Through the secondary vector Aedes albopictus, we're seeing um, the movement of the vectors into more northerly and southerly climates that they weren't previously able to establish. And um, with them, um, they're bringing local dengue transmission. So particularly in areas um, of the Arabian Peninsula uh, and particularly worrying for us in areas of southern Europe, um, we're seeing uh, local dengue transmission. In fact, there have been dengue outbreaks in Italy, uh, Spain and France over the last few years. 
Insect-borne diseases are especially sensitive to weather conditions. An insect is cold-blooded. So whatever the air temperature is around that mosquito, that's the body temperature of the mosquito. And this particular species of mosquito, Aedes aegypti, carries yellow fever, dengue fever, and Zika virus. And as temperatures warm up, the viral replication rate goes faster in the mosquito and transmission dynamics increase as well. And there are lots of examples of extreme climate conditions leading to major outbreaks of disease. Wolbachia is uh, a really, really interesting organism. It's a bacteria, it's an endosymbiont of uh, lots of different insects, um, but particularly it's not found in the primary um, dengue vector Aedes aegypti. So if you take a female mosquito that is infected with Wolbachia and you infect that mosquito with dengue virus, that female mosquito will no longer transmit dengue virus. In male mosquitoes, um, it can make the males basically sterile if they mate with a Wolbachia uninfected female. Okay, this is called cytoplasmic incompatibility. You just have male mosquitoes and you release those into the wild. They'll go off, they'll find an uninfected female mosquito, they'll mate and they'll make all of the eggs inviable. If you keep releasing male mosquitoes over a long enough time, you can essentially crash a population of Aedes aegypti mosquitoes. Aedes allopictus mosquitoes have an existing Wolbachia source, limiting the impact of this control mechanism. Some societies it is uh, normalised. Um, I was working in Brazil around 10 years ago now, and that was during the Zika epidemic. And people were diminishing the importance of Zika. Um, uh, dengue is endemic in some areas of Brazil, and what you see is a lot of our public health measures. There's also a huge, um, huge number of factors that mean that dengue is very hard to beat due to lack of access to clean drinking water, design of the urban landscape, all the rest of it. Um, this was during the run-up to the Brazilian Olympics in Rio de Janeiro and the local city council had taken to putting concrete slabs over water courses in order to protect, prevent mosquitoes from breathing. And although that is a kind of short-term solution, um, that actually has all kinds of other impacts as well, as does spraying chemicals. Um, and so when we look at the way in which the, these things are dealt with, um, they can work in small areas, but long term, if we see like, okay, climate change, um, mosquitoes thrive in hot and wet climates as well. So if there is going to be an interesting increase in uh, global humidity, um, increase in heat pulls, increase in rainfall, that's going to make it even more fertile ground for mosquitoes to breed. The future of dengue control is looking more and more possible with the support of scientific research and innovation. Um, ultimately, we probably need to be doing a lot more research to understand the spread of dengue um, and employing new tools like Wallachia will be quite crucial going forward, particularly in countries for which it's very difficult for them to just remove the mosquito population entirely. Um, control tools like Wallachia could be life-saving. So what should be next on the public health agenda? Should we continue researching vector-borne diseases or tackling threats closer to home, like access to food and sanitation in a warming world? Working together with people and communities at the highest risk of these changes is essential. And if one thing is sure, it is that working together is the one chance that we have in the fight against climate change.